everything ebbs and flows. Civilization climbs, rises, and then it declines. You see. But if you look at it, and, and most people accept that, but most people accept the decline of a civilization based on modern time. Mm -hmm. two, two, 200 years, 300 years. Dealing with um, African history from Pharaoh to Negro. Africans went from a pharaonic mastership to projects. <laughs> We probably in hell already Our dumb ass is not knowing Everybody kissing ass to go to heaven ain't going Put my soul on it I'm fighting devil niggas daily Plus the media be crucifying brother severely Tell me I ain't got son Nigga mama virgin We got a dick that had to lead the birds Back in the ghetto doing wild shit Looking at the sun don't pay Criminal mind all the time Wait for judgment day They say Moses split the Red Sea I split the blunt and rolled the fat when I'm dead Babylon beware Calling for the Pharaoh's kids Retaliation make it legend off the shit we did Still bullshitting niggas in Jerusalem Waiting for signs God coming, she just taking her time uh -huh. Living by the now while the water flow I'm contemplating plots, wonder where the thought of gold Brothers getting shot, coming back, resurrected Is this that raw shit, nigga, check it That raw shit I remember what my papa told me Remember what my papa told me Blasphemy Not for them I'm still in the name of the Lord Them I'm still in the name of the Lord Them I'm still in the name of the Lord the preacher want me very wise. I know he a liar. Have you ever seen a crackhead? That's eternal fire. Why you got these kids' minds thinking that they evil? Why the preacher be a freaky? You say honor God's people. Should we cry when the Pope die? My request, we should cry if they cry. But we worry, my comments. Mama, tell me, am I wrong? Is God just another cop waiting to beat my ass if I don't go pop? Memories of a past time, giving up cash to the leaders, knowing damn well they ain't gonna feed us. In my brain, how can you explain time as we see? It's far enough to live now, in these times of grief. They say Jesus is a common man, but you should understand times in this crime land. My third nation, do what you gotta do, but know you gotta change. Try to find a way to make it out the game. I leave this and hope God can see my heart is pure. It's heaven, just another door. In April, I was fortunate to make the Hajj to Mecca and went back again in September to try and carry out my religious uh, functions and, and, and uh, requirements. But at the same time that I believe in that religion, I have to point out I'm also an American Negro. And I live in a society who, who's, whose uh, social system is based upon the castration of the black man, whose political system is based on castration of the black man, and whose economy is based upon the castration of the black man. A society which in 1964 has more subtle, deceptive, deceitful methods to make the rest of the world think that it's cleaning up its house, while at the same time the thing, same things are happening to us in 1964 that happened in 1954, 1924, and in 1984. They came up with what they call a civil rights bill in 1964, supposedly to solve our problem, and after the bill was signed, uh, three civil rights workers were murdered in cold blood. And the FBI uh, head, Hoover, admits that they know who did it. They've known ever since it happened and they've done nothing about it. Civil rights bill down the drain. No matter how many bills pass, black people in that country, where I'm from, still our lives are not worth two cents. And the government has shown its inability or either its unwillingness to do whatever is necessary to protect life and property where the black American is concerned. So my consent contention is that whenever a people come to the conclusion that the government which they have supported proves itself unwilling and or proves itself unable to protect our lives and protect our property because we have the wrong color skin, we are not human beings unless we ourselves band together and do whatever, however, whenever is necessary to see that our lives and our property is protected. And I doubt that any person in here would refuse to do the same thing were he in the same position. Or I should say, were he in the same condition. I'm not speaking. I'm speaking as a black man from America, which is being a racist society. No matter how much you hear to talk about democracy, it's as racist as South Africa or as racist as Portugal. 
that America has consists of committees. There are 16 senatorial committees that govern the country and uh, 20 congressional committees. Ten of the 16 uh, senatorial committees are in the hands of Southern racialist senators who are racialists. Thirteen of the 20, about this was before the last election, I think it's even more so now. Uh, Ten of the 16 committees Senatorial committees are in the hands of senators who are Southern racialists. Thirteen of the twenty congressional committees were in the hands of uh, Southern congressmen who are racialists. Which means out of the 36 committees that govern the uh, foreign and domestic direction of that government, 23 are in the hands of Southern racialists. Men who in no way believe in the equality of man and men who do anything within their power to see that the black man never gets to the same seat or to the same level that they are on. The reason that these men from that area have that type of power is because America has a seniority system. And, the, and the, these who have that seniority have been there longer than anyone else because the black people in the areas where they live can't vote. And it is only because the black man is the pride of his vote that puts these men in positions of power that gives them such influence in the government beyond their actual intellectual or political ability or be even beyond the number of people from the areas that they represent. So we, have, we can see in that country that no matter what the federal government professes uh, to be doing, the power of the federal government lies in these committees and any time a black man or any kind of legislation is proposed to benefit the black man or give the black man his just due, we find that it's locked up in these committees right here. And when they let something through the committee, usually it is so chopped up and fixed up that by the time it becomes law, it's a law that can't be enforced. Well, another example is the Supreme Court desegregation decision that was handed down in 1954. This is a law. And this law, they have not been able to implement this law in New York City or in Boston or in uh, uh, Cleveland or Chicago or the northern cities. And my contention is that any time you have a country, supposedly a democracy, supposedly the land of the free and the home of the brave, and it can't enforce laws even in the northern most cosmopolitan and progressive part of it that will benefit a black man, if those laws can't be enforced or that law can't be enforced, how much heart do you think we will get when they pass some civil rights legislation which only involves more laws? If they can't enforce this law, they'll never enforce those laws. So my contention is that we are faced with a racialistic society, a society in which they are deceitful, deceptive, and the only way we can bring about a change is to talk the kind of language, speak the language that they understand. The racialist never understands a peaceful language. The racialist never understands the nonviolent language. The racialist, we have, he's spoken his language to us for 400 years. We have been the victim of his brutality. We are the ones who face his dogs that tear the flesh from our limbs only because we want to enforce the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones who have our skulls crushed, not by the Ku Klux Klan, but by policemen, only because we want to enforce what they call the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones upon whom water hoses are turned with pressure so hard that it rips the clothes from our back. Not men, but the clothes from the backs of women and children. You've seen it yourself. Only because we want to enforce what they call the law. Well, any time you live in a society supposedly based upon law, and it doesn't enforce its own law because the color of a man's skin happens to be wrong, then I say those people are justified to resort to any means necessary to bring about justice where the government can't give them justice. I don't believe in any form of unjustified extremism, but I believe that when a man is exercising extremism. A human being is exercising extremism in defense of liberty for human beings. It's no vice. And when one is moderate, 
in the pursuit of justice for human beings, I say he's a sinner. And I might add in my conclusion, in fact, America is one of the best examples when you read its history about extremism. Old Patrick Henry said, liberty or death. That's extreme. <laughs> Very extreme. I, I read once, passingly, about a man named Shakespeare. I only read about him passing, passingly, but I remember one thing he wrote that kind of moved me. Uh, he put it in the mouth of Hamlet, I think it was, who said, to be or not to be. He was in doubt about something. <laughs> Whether it was nobler in the mind of man to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, moderation, or to take up arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing, end them. And I go for that. If you take up arms, you'll end it. But if you sit around and wait for the one who's, who's in power to make up his mind that he should end it, you'll be waiting a long time. And in my opinion, the young generation of whites, blacks, brown, whatever else there is, you're living at a time of extremism, a time of revolution, a time when there's got to be a change. People in power have misused it, and now there has to be a change, and a better world has to be built, and the only way it's going to be built with it, with it, it is with extreme methods. And I, for one, will join in with anyone, don't care what color you are, as long as you want to change this miserable condition that exists on this earth. Thank you. Civilization um, changed hands. Mm -hmm. We want to clip it. And before we do that, we need to clear up this Hyksos thing. We think that the Hyksos period, which was about a hundred years after the fall of the old kingdom, um, we keep thinking that that's a, a foreign people, and all it was was some pre-dynastic Egyptians who used to rule prior to the dynastic Egyptians coming back for one last time and taking the state again. So we talk about a family fight, a change in hands of the same people. Now that's documented in Gerald Mass's um, Book of the Beginnings. Um, 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 and if, if, you know, so they, they, they call them the Shepherd Kings. But that was nothing but the pre-dynastic Egyptians because the Shepherd Kings worship Set. So how could set a primary Egyptian deity be worshipped by a foreigner that's coming in and invading? No, we're talking about the pre-dynastic period set was the primordial god. Mm -hmm. And then the dynastic came in and it was called the Ammonites. And they venerated Ammon. Mm -hmm. And after after that, uh, usually when, 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 when a civilization come in, the god that precedes that civilization they used to turn that god into the devil, or the adversary, um, or the adversary. And I think we have to re rethink this whole set and Osiris thing, because these are polarities, because if you notice, if you see pharaohs, a lot of pharaohs are, are standing between Horus and Set, or Osiris and Set. So when we go back, we can't even look at the, 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 the deity system or the mythology uh, and try to... Uh, reference it with biblical things, you know, God, devil, this, that, you know, we, the, the concepts was different. Sometimes we, we we substitute, we try to look at these ancient principles with a modern mind. And it didn't mean that a lot of times. We'll get into some of that, but uh, they say when you get to so many years, there's a whole other group of principles that preceded that. So it's incalculable time. And these were African people. These are African people. You see, them? these are African people. Now remember now, because a lot of times, if you, if sometimes, if we don't have documents on it, doesn't necessarily mean it didn't exist. It's just that you had traditions where there were oral traditions. Mm -hmm. And we see that now, what's left over with the griots. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because we had detailed files. You see? And so it was nothing if your brain, you know, usually now we need the writing and stuff because we only use the, what they use, how many, 10% of the whole brain now in the modern society? 5%? Yeah. Well, if back this time, if, what about if you had complete detailed files and you used all of your brain? That means you, you could store knowledge and information for thousands and thousands of years. As a matter of fact, we can say that the dynastic period, or what they call a monumental period, when they started writing down these things on the temple walls, they were basically 
um, downloading information, putting it into metaneta from their brains, from their, their, their genetic memory banks. It's a bank. You see genetic memory banks. So all, when you see all of that grandiose stuff you see in Kimmy on those walls, and like, like, like John Henry Clark said, they stomped their foot, they wrote about it. But this stuff was coming from inside out. You see, so when you're talking about history, when, you, when you're talking about history, we're talking about a phenomenal amount of time. Like in, in, so, in so many words, uh, when we have these concepts, um, a lot of people look at our history and think it's a tragedy. They asked Dr. Ben this question back in 1991. Well, if we were so great, why did we fall? And Dr. Ben said, no, time ran out. But they're still thinking on a modern thing based on time, where civilization is only 200 years. You do good if you get 300 years out of a civilization because they ebb and flow, they, they rise and decline so fast. But if you understand that the ancient Egyptians say that we got 10,000 years of, this is Manetho's history, of 10,000 years of, um, of dynastic and pre-dynastic rule. And they say, well, who used to rule before then? They say, that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule. So that's a whole other period of us in even a greater stage mm -hmm. that we declined from on into the monumental phase. So when we got to the monumental phase, when we started building to make the, 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 the actual monuments, it meant that we started we started deteriorating in a particular aspect based on memory, which means this. We could no longer calculate thousands and thousands and thousands of history in our brains. Because it's just like any race that stays around for thousands and thousands of years, it's just like a an old person gets senility, see now. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we started making records, mm -hmm. you see, to, to calculate the detailed files that was in our brains, the detailed files of history, and, and put them on the monumental phase and the papyrus phase, so the simple fact that we would have this stuff when we eventually run out of this time and become what they call laggards. It just means a person that, that's, that's been around so long until it goes into remission. It goes into a dormancy state. Mm -hmm. And that's what civilizations do. It, 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 uh, this guy, Maurice Carterell's book, Tutankhamun Prophecies, tells the story on how when a civilization um, rises, the sun emits a certain amount of rays for that civilization's melatonin levels to rise to a certain level. And they, they are able to uh, do all of this great stuff for so many years. For, uh, for so many years, probably shorter now with the civilization, but thousands of years for us, because we're not with us on the planet. So we do these great things and build these monuments and do all this godlike stuff, because the sun is beaming a certain ray to raise that civilization up based on the melatonin levels. Mm -hmm. And then when that when when, when when everything down here ebbs and flows, when it, when it's time for that 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 ray to go to another civilization. Or go do something else and stuff. The rays emit someplace else, and the melatonin levels fall, mm -hmm. and that person goes into dormancy because melanin is nothing but records, akashic records. The word akash means blackness. Mm -hmm. It's called sidakash. So, so in so many words, what we're talking about here with us, fortunately, it lasted for thousands and thousands of years. So when Doctor Ben said, you know, time ran out, he was not talking about two hundred years. You see what I'm saying? He was talking about taking a recess after dominating the earth and dominating history. You see what I'm saying? And when I say domination, I'm not talking about dominating over people. I'm talking about dominating civilization. Dominating history at, um, at a certain, uh, certain point. Then it's time to go to a recess. So we can first say that this, this, this recess started happening with the influx of the Greeks. But, I take another history. There's other things that's actually happening now because if we were masters and we knew, because we do have papyruses, we have the hermetic texts and all this type of stuff that was, was translated into Latin 
and uh, um, uh, in the Latin and Greek, it said that we knew we was going to decline and go in this dormancy state 5,000 years before it happened. So if you knew something was going to happen 5,000 years before that time, then you prepare for that. And this is where the Greek stuff comes in. We look at some kind of history, and we look at history looking back, but we don't know the concepts of what the people was actually doing when they was actually going through that particular history. So let me give you another take on what I mean by that. I think that the Greek period and the Roman period was a necessity. Now, this is what I mean by that. First of all, when I ask the question in the spirit realm, I ask the question, well, why did you let the Greeks into the Egyptian educational system? And the first thing I ask is, why did you let white people into the Egyptian um, educational system? They say, no, we, the spirit realm say, no, we never let white people into the educational system. I said, but you let the Greeks in. They said, yes. Then what are they trying to say? They're trying to say that the Greek civilization was a black civilization. Now, we do know now that they just convened um, in, the, in the late 1990s they wrote a book called East Face of Helicon. He's an Oxford, Oxford of Cambridge. And they're saying that the Greek mythology, now this is different, now Greek Greek philosophy came from the Egyptians, or the Camites. Greek mythology came from the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians is where you got Carthage and later on Libya, that part of Africa. Those were pre-dynastic Egyptians. Black. Black. And if the, if, 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 if the Greek mythology and the first book of, 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 of fiction is Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey. Then you have to ask, and they said, and we can trace the Hesed's theogony, which gives you your Greek mythology. And the people at Oxford University in 1999 or 1998 concluded that this stuff, origins, comes from the Phoenician, which they even traced. Athena. Now Athens is supposed to be the great citadel of Greece, one of the central pla uh, central places that is named after Athena, Athens. Well, Athena is a god that they trace from Libya, which would be modern day Libya, earlier Carthage, and even earlier Phoenician, Phoenicia. Which means that it goes right in hand. So they said that the Greek mythology came from Phoenicia, and they traced the the uh, Athena to Libya. And Athena is an Egyptian god called Nis in in Egypt, and she's the form of Maya. And they're now calling her or uh, celebrating her as an African goddess, and she's supposed to be the central goddess of Greece. It meant that the civilization of Greek had to be a Phoenician civilization. Up until the point that they entered Egypt, by the time that the, uh, that the, uh, the Ptolemy period, yes. those were black people. So now since, for, so somewhere in the last 2,000 years, we got the Europeans that came in and usurped the black culture. Now where did these Europeans come from? Indo-Europe. You see what I'm saying? And see, this is some stuff about history that we have to understand something. Because if the Greek period was actually black, and you can go to Greece today, and here you go again, you know, you can go there and they sequester these people, the original people of the land. I met a, a Greek um, that was darker than me. And he said, my people been on the land for thousands of years. When they went to Iraq, when they had the Iraqi war, the Washington Post had to print an explanation or why there's these black people in a, in a wreck, you see, that's been there, Fallujah, in all these particular places in the wreck, it's been there. So, and, and, and so when, 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 they, when the soldiers start asking these questions, well, what are these black people here? They had to print something on how these people migrated out of Africa, see what I'm saying? When we know that ain't nothing but Northeast Africa, Iraq, Arabia, all of that. So when they got, but they had to print this thing in the Washington Post because they got black people in. 
And so when the, when, when the soldiers asked these questions, well, what are these black people doing here? They had to make an uh, African migration to cover up the fact that that original land was black people and black people still live on that land where they live in Israel. You see what I'm saying? Where they even live as far as Vietnam. So the point I'm trying to make here is we even have to question that. Take for instance. Well, let me give you one other thing that, that, I, that I want to do to, to clear this up about the Egyptians and their relationship with the Greeks. Another faction of African people. There's some books called the Alexandria Product Projects that came out in the early 90s. And so they, what they wanted to do is, is they said, well, we want to we try to get as much stuff that we know that we benefited from the Library of Alexandria. Which the Library of Alexandria was nothing but a consortium of works that came from the temples to build one, build one central um, library during the time of um, during the time of, 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 of Cleopatra and the time of the whole Greek thing. They, they, they convened and had these conferences and they had these, these books that came out, these Alexandria pro product books that came out and they, they mentioned something in there. Now in this relationship, the reason why se several doctrines had to be handed over to the Greeks is because they understood one thing. They understood that Hieroglyphics of Metaneta was going to be a dead language for close to 2,000 years, for over 2,000 years. Understanding these priests, understanding this stuff was going to be a dead language, they had to give certain things to the cultures that would be later cultures that it would, these later cultures would give the information that will fall in the hands of younger cultures, even younger cultures than the later cultures. So the Egyptian priests understood we have to further this particular information, which which eventually went to the Moors. So let me let me let me go back to this, so you can understand this. In this Alexandrian conference that they had, they came up with the truth in the early 1990s. They said that a, a 100 year period of Greek rule. One to two hundred year period, mostly about a hundred years, they did one thing. They literally translated Metaneta, a hieroglyphics, at the Temple of Dendera, the Temple of Isis, the Temple of Esna, a Temple of Komombo, uh, and, and some Ptolemy uh, temples, and the Library of Alexandria. The Egyptian priests. Now how can a Greek person, how can a person from another culture know what the Canaanites are thinking if, 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 if it's not their language? In order for this stuff to be translated and transferred to the Greeks, it was the Egyptian priests. So for a 100 year period at these particular temples and at the Library of Alexandria, what they did is they translated the meta, meta principles, doctrines, and all of the knowledge, a great deal of it, because part of it burned, the library of Alexandria burnt down twice. Central pieces they had to get off of the mainland of Kemet, and they translated meta, meta into Greek, Latin, Aramaic, Arabic, Amharic, and all of the central Hebrew, all of the central languages that would be the later day languages that will go out for the future. So that entire area they translated, the Egyptian priests for a hundred years, they translated these particular texts because they understood that Metaneta wouldn't survive. You see what I'm saying? And so, and, and, and so even and so even the people at the Alexandrian conferences that knew this admitted this in the 1990s. Now even Walter Williams said that a lot of the cultures around there they had a language they can speak, but they didn't have scripts. So Latin was created by these. So they would go to Kemet, which was the central place of education. And these cultures would travel to Kemet. And they would say, well listen, here's a script. It's going to go along with your language. The Egyptian priests created scripts, which would be Latin, Greek, Hebrew, or what have you. They created scripts for the central people around that area. 
Arabic, you see, Arabic, all of these particular texts were nothing but inventions of the Egyptian mystery system. So, about, so, so Walter Williams talked about that, how they didn't have languages, they would go to Kemet and they would give them scripts to go along with their languages. But on the other hand, what they did do with all of these texts, they translated these actual texts from Metaneta into these central languages. And that's what the Greeks were there for, were there for now. And then they also knew that the Romans was coming, which the first years of Rome, the Romans tell you, we're nothing but a spinoff or a later day culture of the Etruscans. And we got statues of the Etruscans look like Isaac Hayes. And Etruscans was a matriarchal culture, huh? So even that, you see, um, you know it's a black culture. The Romans, so what we see as central Greek stuff was intentionally given to the Greeks by the Egyptian priests by translating the stuff into Greek and also into Latin. Then the Romans came in, which was a culture that the original Romans were black people, pretty much like Dr. Asa Higgins said, and a lot of these scholars, if we were to transport ourselves back to ancient Rome, just like if you go downtown Manhattan, you will see most of the people you will see would be white. But if you go to Harlem, most of the people you see is black. Ancient Rome used to look like Harlem because the culture was so old and they had ruled for so well, they were been a part of civilization so old, black people, Africans, until the central people that you would actually see would be a sea of blackness. So when you see these, 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 these epic movies that they have, and you see one or two black people in the crowd of a whole sea of white people in Ben-Hur and all these types of Roman movies, Spartacus and different things like that. Mm -hmm. If you was to actually go back to that particular time, it would be groups of white people, patches of, of Europeans that migrated into a central black culture. Or you would have a group of people that came together as a Roman Senate and dominant and started ruling over a wide body of people. So it would be like South Africa. Central, the masses of the people are black, but they got these rulers that migrated in. Pictures of Roman families that's black. To this day, if you go to Rome, they got nappy hair. You see what I'm saying? Wow. You, you see? then was the culture of the Romans so different from that of their predecessors if they were still black people, Egyptian people. Okay, it, it's culture and okay, it, it, you know the culture. Now different. remember, now some of this culture started. It wasn't the central people of the land that was running it. It was these usurpers, just like you would have in South Africa, that had come in. You see what I'm saying? That had come in and started imposing things. Now let me give you an example. They talk about Roman genius, and they did this, the, the, the bathhouses and the aqueducts and all of this kind of thing. They said they basically, the Romans benefited from when they would go into places in Africa and around the ancient world and take slaves, and those slaves would take their technology, they bring them back, and they would use that technology to build Rome. So even, even from the buildings and from anything they did, it wasn't the actual Roman people that did this. This was the people that they colonized. You see, they are extrapolated. And these geniuses around the ancient world would come in and build the Roman engineering. See, the Romans didn't do nothing. But this, it was just a small body of people that didn't know how to do but one thing. Kill people. And have people being killed for recreation in the Colosseum. Acquiesce certain material that they had gotten from the ancient people. So, a classic story was that they were dominating the Hebrew people, and at that time, Hebrew people were black people. Mm -hmm. the, the white Jew didn't come into the picture to Spain. He was converted into Judaism. So the ones that were nothing but pre were, were nothing but upper Egypt, um, uh, no, Lower Egypt, Lower Egypt, Lower Egypt, which is Upper Egypt, 
and Upper Egypt is Lower Egypt. You see what I'm saying? So, so they call the, the bottom part of Egypt going into Ethiopia that was called Upper Egypt. The top part of Egypt they call Lower Egypt. Lower Egyptians later on became your Hebrews. So we still talk about a branch of Egyptian family because even in the, even in, in Hebrew mythology or Hebrew book they say that Misraim is Egypt and that's one of the the tribes of Egypt. Tribes of Israel. Did you get the word Is, Is, Ra, El, Isis, Ra, and El, or Al, is one of the names for, for Horus is Al. So Israel is Isis, Ra, and El, because Ra is also interchangeable as a form of, um, of, of Osiris, because Osiris, Osiris is the hidden God. When, when you get the word Amen, Ra, Amen means hidden. So Isis, Ra, and El, Al, son of Horus, Israel. You see what I'm saying? What we're talking about nothing are just other branches of our family. Whether it's Phoenician, whether it's all of this type of stuff, whether it's Sumerian, we talk about nothing that was not black. Everything was black. Now, in dealing with this, when the Romans was ruling over, ruling over Israel, or parts of Israel in Palestine or Jerusalem or what have you, at that time, in order for the people at that time, so they talked about the Roman Senate and the first, and these, and, and you know, the Greeks and the Romans, the birthplace of democracy. But all those are later concepts, and those are concepts that was given by the Senate. But the actual people of that land, if you didn't have a central religion or a central system of spirituality, the people would rebel. So what happened was they had these Hebrews in the area that had a proud tradition of whatever they was into based on their religion. So the Roman citizens is going, look, we favor them because these people uh, 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 have a central way of worship, a central way of life based on their religion or based on their system of spirituality. At that particular time, the Roman mythology of Romulus and Remus had fallen into disrepair because the Roman emperors was, uh, was telling everybody that they were the gods. So you worship Caesar. So as a result, after a couple of hundred years, the actual central theme of mythology started falling into disrepair. And they knew that the Roman people would start to rebel. But then they started seeing the Roman people gravitating to around a new offspring of Hebrewism at that particular time, which was early Christianity, which is different from the Christianity that the Romans did. I'll tell you that, that, that in a minute. But they were going to uh, it was Gnosticism and the Hebrew thing and the, the, the central people in the culture started looking at people outside of Rome as a central aspect of spirituality and if Rome couldn't convince the people that to follow Caesar then the people would rebel and Rome would fall. So Rome said look we have to get a central religion. They say now the Egyptians invested in Greece with all these texts. We took over Greece so now we own all of the texts. So what they did was, they knew that some of the things that the early Christians and the early Hebrews was dealing with wasn't nothing but Egyptian mythology and Egyptian science anyway, and they owned all of those particular texts. And they got together with a series of conferences and put together what we call the Central Christianity. Now, the only thing was the Central Christianity had a, 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 a deeper discipline that the Hebrews and those which the early Gnostics and stuff went by. And the Romans say, well, look, some of these things, you know, like not eating pork or not being able to drink like certain things. And some of these disciplines, they say, well, look, we will, we will put in a new religion to accommodate the Romans who was used to gluttony. <laughs> See, same thing happened in the period of when they were trying to get the UAP after, after the Romans usurped the, the Christianity and tried to get the Europeans to follow Christianity. The Christian Europeans say, well, look, we'll follow Christianity, but we got to take our festivals and our different practices. You got to incorporate them into Christianity. So all this, these winter solstice and these festivals later on became Christianity, Christmas, and, the, and some of these festivals that the Europeans had around that time, they just usurped them and put them into the, 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 the Christian holidays, um, or made them into Christian holidays. But if you trace them back, 
you tra- if you trace them back, you will see that they 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 were pagan in that particular way, which was the pay of you know some of these festivals. Right. So now, so as a result, Rome had to make a central religion of the state, but they had to make a religion that can accommodate that can accommodate the, the, the masses of Rome. Just like now, easier to be a Christian than a Muslim. Or either, a, or either a Hebrew or, 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 or the Jewish thing later on. Why? Because Christianity, you get to do certain things. Most of basically, you can do the hell you want as long as you ask the Lord to forgive, forgive you. And that accommodates. That's why we ask the question, well, if, 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 if you don't even supposed to eat pork, why do Christians eat pork? Because they said that what the Romans, it goes all the way back to Rome, what the Romans did for the Roman citizens, and they said it was also the Paul, Pauline doctrine. Paul was a Roman citizen. Paul was also an agent for Rome. Right. So he fashioned the Christianity without the strict doctrines so that the Roman people could acquiesce to what I'm saying. And that's what central Christianity is about is it's, a, it's, it's something that is designed for Roman consumption and later on European consumption. You see what I'm saying? European consumption. Because it because the African way of it, you start getting into ways of life. Certain things you don't create. And we see this when we see the Christianity. We even see this when we see uh Judaism, which is ancient, is spin off of ancient Hebrew. It's just that we don't know what them Jews do, but they got all these strict rules and stuff. Well, stuff gotta be kosher. You see what I'm saying? We don't eat no shellfish. See, so different things like that, but the Romans they made it so hey, it could be a party. <laughs> we can go to the party with this. You see, now going back let, to the, let me ask you though, yeah. when they were killing Christians, right? These were black people they were killing. They were black people they were killing, and they was they, these were the people that they was usurping their religion from. So they was killing the ones they said, no, we got. It's just like this. They say, look, um, we trying to take this religion, but if we got some people that's got practices. It's different than the Romans. We got to take them out if we're going to make this religion central and conduce it to us. But the ones that they were killing was the original Christians. They're saying that the original Christianity don't even resemble the Christianity that we have now. Because original Christianity was a spinoff from the Hebrew aspect, which had a lot of codes and laws. You see what I'm saying? So, when they, so those sects that they were killing... It wasn't. It, 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 it wasn't. They were killing. They were killing Romans, or they were killing um, people that had the same faith. No, they were trying to cover up the fact that there was groups of people that had another indigenous way of worshiping, and they had to get rid of this because Paul, the, the Pauline doctrines, had much more um, uh, uh, what you call a, a pseudo type of practices that the Roman people could get with. You got to realize, we're talking about people that used to go to Colosseums just to see black people getting killed. We're talking about people like Caligula, with all kind of perverted sex acts and stuff like that. I just um, wrote on these texts, some texts in France called Abduction Extraordinaire. Never was translated into English, but it says that these, it talks about these people. He said these people that live in, in Europe with these mountains that their way of communication is not a clear one because they're always grumbling. Because they were saying they even had to be taught how to talk, how to speak. Count Vaughn talked about that in Ruins of Empire. But in this Egyptian text, in this Egyptian text, they said that these people are always grumbling. They have a reprehensible sex act, which means, you know, Whatever got a hold, it don't matter. They can even fuck animals. <laughs> These are Egyptian texts that they get over in France and stuff. I was able to look at the only one of these because it was a book came out called Set the God of Confusion by T.H. Valdi. It's in most libraries, it's in most, um, it's in most, uh, college libraries, but it was never published as far as a book for central publication. It's mostly in college libraries and stuff like that. 
you know, the colleges got books that they never published to the public. They only published for the colleges. And this book set the God of Confusion. They actually have these texts from France in there. But they talk about these people, you know, and they say these people do not announce the day of battle. So you have to understand what they're trying to say. They say these people here are unfair. You see, if you have a disagreement, you're all going to come together and you're going to disagree, have the right to disagree. These people here will kill you without even, you even knowing that you even you had a problem with it or they had a problem with you. So it goes into all, it's what this, these texts are trying to say in the Egyptian terms. And these texts may be about three, 4,000 years old. And what they were trying to say, they was looking at the Europeans and all, you know what I'm saying? And they were saying, you know, uh, 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 these people, you know, these people are not, don't, they were trying to tell the people because these were in religious texts, don't look at these people and say that they got the same type of mindset that you have as a human mindset. This is something new that's coming to the earth. So by the time the Romans came, that's what why Hannibal and them fathers said, you're going to have to deal with these people. But Hannibal went in and he kicked their ass. They said in one day battle, he killed 70,000. You see. And he kicked their behind and they said he, but this is what he did to show you the mindset. Because the Europeans now looking at this said that he came all the way to the gates of Rome. And they said he turned around and went home. They wanted to know, they can't understand these war generals studied him. And they wanted to know, they couldn't understand why didn't you go in and take Rome? Like they would have done. If they come in for conquest, they're going to conquer it. You see what I'm saying? And they're going to be there for a couple of hundred years until they fall weak. So they're saying, why didn't you take Rome like they took the Indians of Native Americans over here? Or like they took South Africa. Why didn't you come in? You had them beat. But what they didn't understand, and to this day, these European generals can't understand why. He did his battle. He proved his point, And then he went to fuck home. They couldn't understand why he didn't use Rome as a weapon, uh, uh, as, as a situation of conquest. It's because that's not his nature. That wasn't his nature to conquer Rome. What he was trying to do was kick them in the ass so he could fortify Carthage for a few more years. You see. And so, you, you see, so it's, it's, it's a lot of things. Which, which later on, so in so many words, Rome had to be so that we could have the experience of what atrocities would come, you see what I'm saying, with later European cultures. Which leads us to the Egyptian priests again, no one again, because they did it twice. They, they say we got to further this information to Greece and Rome, and then during the time of, of um, Muhammad's invasion into Egypt, the Egyptian priest once again said, we have to take this information to Europe. Now why? They said after they closed the last temple, they closed the last temple of Isis at Philae. For some reason, I don't know if it was spiritual, they said Europe went into a dark age. I think they went into a dark age because after Rome fell, you see what I'm saying? They how never did, had how this. Rome fall? Huh? How did Rome fall? Well, it deteriorated based on like anything else, from corruption. And Rome fell after its reputation was found out. Rome was weak for a couple of years, but they had killed so many people until they had a reputation. You don't mess with Rome. But remember, they said that the, 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 the German vandals. They, they were illiterate, so they didn't get the memo that these people wasn't nothing to fuck with. And they went up in there and kicked Rome ass. <laughs> you see, so it deteriorated over the years based on, based on, um, based on corruption. And also they, they, with Constantine, although he, you know, they say he, didn't he kill his mother and his daughter or something like that? 
he turned it into a Christian country and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Um, it was weakened for the simple fact that it meant that they couldn't, if they're going to do the army thing, they're going to have to do it in another fashion. They're going to have to have the Holy Roman Empire. But it's a Holy Roman Empire. So they got to hide behind the Pope when they do these conquests. But it's not going to be the same might of the Caesars. You see what I'm saying? They're just going to have to just rule in another way. In actuality, they, they never did fall. They just acquiesced Europe with the religion. So it became a religious domination. You see what I'm saying? Um, a religious domination and stuff. The military failed. But they had a new way to rule. You see, the new, new, new way to rule. It's the same thing when we talked about the Queen of the, uh, Prince Charles after he got his ass whipped over here and they couldn't deal with guerrilla warfare. Mm -hmm. The way these rednecks was over here fighting. They said, no, nah, you go over there, they're going to beat you a hundred years. They said, it's a regroup and we will take over financially. And then we'll put, because of the finances, we'll put the heads of the government will be connected to the queen. And we'll rule that way, rule through secrecy. So, same thing happened with the Egyptian priests after they took, after um, Egypt fell. They said, well, look, it, when, uh, you know, uh, uh, when Mah um, and Muhammad was still living when the Arabs invaded, um, invaded um, uh, uh, Egypt. If there was a Muhammad, it could have just been a central priest to it. Because we know Bilal, come to find out he was the one who wrote the Quran because if there was a historical Muhammad, he couldn't read or write to the day he died. You see? Mm -hmm. He couldn't read or write to the day he died. And we knew it was some type of Egyptian, Ethiopian priesthood just by a central surah of the star where they mentioned Sirius in the Quran. You see? The moon, Tahuti, the cow, Hathor, you see, these different these different things that they did means that this used to be, this was a part of a mystery system. You see, uh, and, and in this particular case, it probably was an Ethiopian Kushite mystery system because we know Arabia was a part of Kush. We know it had to be a Kushite mystery system based on the first five books of Moses. You see, it, it's not a central Egyptian thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's just a... Of the third coming of Judy Judeo Christian, you see. But in that particular case, by that time of them, Ethiopia had usurped the whole Hebrew thing and part of Coptic Christianity. So we know who who put this thing together. You see what I'm saying? It uh, it, it wasn't translated from Gabriel, but then again, Gabriel could have been. A priesthood. But in so many words, after they came and 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 and, and, and dominated and, and, and took over Egypt, the Egyptian priest said, Look, Islam is a new conquest tool. You see, to, to essentially bring Islam into play, they, they had to fight at Mecca and Medina. It was a kick-ass machine. So they say this is the same kick-ass machine that conquered Egypt. So what we can do, these Egyptian priests, is we can go under the banner of Islam, take all these sacred texts, and go into Europe, and Islam will be a conquest thing, but the religion would be a mystery system. You see, so... They, so all these ancient Egyptian texts and all these ancient stuff that was translated. So here go again. Here's another translation point. They took Meta Meta. They took Greek. They took Coptic. They took Latin. Remember now, the Egyptian priests had already translated stuff into Latin and translated stuff into Greece. Coptic is later day Egyptian. You got Hebrew. But these Egyptian priests are the authors of all these languages and all these texts. So what they did is they went to Turkey, Baghdad, 
Salamanca, Spain, and then they translated the Greek, the Latin, the Coptic, the Metaneta into Arabic. And then they use it as a central force to open up the 16 universities in Europe to teach the European. They stayed there close to 800 years. Then whatever they brought to Europe, the European preserved. They had these conferences. They had a conference at Toledo. You get Toledo, Ohio. Comes from Toledo, Spain. And from those conferences of Toledo, and this is after the either right before the expulsion of the Moors in 1492 or right after. They had these conferences of all these texts that the Moors had brought up from Egypt and brought up from around the central ancient world and gave to the Europeans for 800 years, close to 800 years. So they took these texts and they had these, 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 they had these, these periods. They called them Renaissance periods. Now, so what they did is they had these conferences and they had these, 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 these uh, festivals or conferences or these renaissance periods in a place called Toledo. And from Toledo, with all those texts and stuff from Toledo, Spain, Cambridge, Oxford, and those early universities around Europe opened from the stuff that they preserved from the Moors. Then, after 1492, and a little bit, a couple of years later, they start having the Renaissance period in Italy. Now remember that this is very key, because you'll hear these white people talk about the Renaissance periods. And they'll talk about things and all this learning and all this stuff. stuff from music to art to philosoph uh, philosophical points of view it would be the mindset of the European coming from out of the Middle Ages they talk about the Renaissance period and all the Renaissance period was is the Pope And the Italians taking advantage of the learning that was given to the Europeans for the last 800 years by the Moors. So in so many words, here's another period where they basically take all these ancient doctrines of the Moors to black man and steal it and say it's theirs. So they, every time you hear these great rent runners, they have one in Toledo. Anytime you have these great things, these, 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 these great periods, this is nothing but just acquiescing the Moors. The, the Moors information I take for instance, your secret societies, what they would do, the secret societies were basically started by the Moors. Let me explain. The Knights Templars, York Rite, Scottish Rite, and all this. So let me explain how this came about. Because a lot of the doctrines after the Moors went to the secret societies too. And then they could, they could, they could, sift out the greater knowledge and then give you the seven liberal arts mm -hmm. and stuff like that but, they, but there's higher learn, degrees of learning that's now become the company of the lodge mm -hmm. now let me explain how this lodge thing came about the Moors came in they created the 16 universities that's what we can count we don't know okay let's say if you went to the university and then you, you got your regular learning but then you would initiate into a fraternity. Well, the same thing happened in the Moa science was this. You would come in and they would give you the general learning and then you would initiate 
into a higher degree of learning, which now would be the fraternities, which is a ceremonial thing. But at that particular time, it was the, the Masonic orders. So your Masonic order would be equivalent to a, a, a fraternity in modern day. So when you went to these universities and stuff, and you got to a certain level, and you learned the general several liberal arts and stuff, and the general several um, stuff that you learned, which now is all the, the, the universities um, um, teach. After that, you would go into a Masonic order that was a part of the universities, or a secret society that is a part of the universities, you see what I'm saying, to learn higher degrees of knowledge. We see remnants of that now where you got the skull and bones at Yale. So the skull and bones at Yale, although you got the people from Yale, but you got a secret society, that, that all came from the Moors. So who, what would be the secret societies inside of the universities of the Moors? It would be the York right, Scottish right, all these different ones. And then later on, groups like the Rosicrucians that would come up. And what they did is that they took this, all of this Moorish doctrines. And so a lot of the higher degree stuff became a ward of the Masonic orders. You see what I'm saying? But all this stuff is nothing but stuff that they learned from the Moors. You see, from they learned from the Moors. And everything is a series of, of acquiescing somebody else's paradigms. So the Moors saw a vision. The Moors saw a vision of a country in a place by the setting sun that was not even a civilization yet. It hadn't even come into fruition. And the Moors set out to bring that city on a shining hill that Ronald Reagan talks about. In the West, they start America. That's why you, you, you so many presidents before you, George Washington's were all black. Those were Moors. So this whole system over here was set up, you see what I'm saying? By the Moors. And for some reason, because of the Moors conquering Europe and the Moors being the origin of Americas, for some reason the people who benefited from that deemed the Moor, which means black faced one, or the black or more, or it also means, because see, see, uh, anytime you hear the word Sufi, mm -hmm. that's another word for the Moors. The word Sufi means woolly haired one. So instead of and so it's, it's so so instead of saying so so they'll, they'll separate Sufi from the Moor. The Moor was a woolly haired one, you see. And some reason I don't know if it was after after um, Spain. Uh, C. Primadel calls it manichaeism, racism, with Queen Isabella and those particular ones. They deem the Moor. The enemy. Who? The European secret societies that were started by the Moors. Okay. You see, it was started by the Moors. For some reason, it's almost as if to say, um, because you are a teacher, you have to be our enemy. Is this why I do an initiation? They come in. Like Dr. Ben said, when, 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 when the white masons or the white secret societies, what they do is when they, when they, whenever their initiates or their neophytes cross over into the, into the initiated, the first thing they do is bring a black man in from wherever, blindfolded, and say, this is your father. Always hold 
him down. Hmm. Why? They know that civilization originated with us. They know that they are the latter part of that. For some reason, they feel that the only way they can rule is to keep the initiators of civilization down. It's some sick, demented way of thinking. It's a fear, xenophobia. This particular fear, we got, we got to coin a new term for it. It's not the fear of a... Xenophobia is the fear of a person that's unlike you. Different cultures or what have you. We got to coin a new phrase that has to be into the lexicon. And that is a word that will say, you fear a person that you deem is greater than you. And that's the difference here. They fear us and they, they say that we are the enemies not because we are different. We are the enemies because we are the initiators of civilization and we gave them all that they have. You see, if you build a TV, you build an airplane, you build anything, the blueprints on what you might later they come to build these things, you got the technology from them earlier people. Now you might expound upon it to the point where you uh, it's useful to the time you're living in, but nevertheless you were not the authors of the blueprint. You were not the master builder. We are the master builders. So you have a fear of our greatness. Yes. And because you fear our greatness, you see we always have to be an enemy because they figure our rise is their fault. You see. So they feel that they can be around as long as they want to, as long as we don't rise. And what they don't realize, here it goes again. They are thinking that we're gonna do to them like they do to us. Because they think that humans think like them. No. You see what I'm saying? Your mother and your father. Just like our mothers and fathers would not treat us the same way as a child would treat somebody. You see. And basically, they're incapable of love. Now I'm not talking about a sensation. Because that word is thrown around a lot. You see, I'm not talking about the way somebody makes you feel. And you, and you basically... Um, you basically react based on this person giving you a chemical reaction and make you feel a certain way. No, we talk about reacting based on the way you feel about somebody. It's different. See, if you only reply to me based on the way I make you feel, you see what I'm saying? That's selfish. And it's selfish because you don't know how to feel about somebody even the fact that they never made you feel a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, you know, it's the same, you know, so it's, 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 it's this thing, it's this fear that they feel that the society that they're going to be in has to be based on keeping the architects down. Number one, you got to keep them down because you stole every damn thing from them. Just for that to come out, you see what I'm saying, would make you feel inferior. Now, that one um, was thinking like them. We wouldn't think that you're inferior if you inherited a civilization that we put together, but you think that you're inferior, you see what I'm saying, if you told the people, no, they're, they're the architects of this thing. So it's, a, it's some psychological sick and twisted stuff. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, ne nevertheless, you know, um, what we, what we have a problem with is understanding people's thoughts, people's mentalities, people's temperament. You see what I'm saying? And we as black people get caught up in that because we think that they think like us. 
you know, all, all this stuff had to be in the particular aspect because, let me give you, you said, well, why did this have to be this way? Well, look, let's just take the Moors. Because some people say, well, you know, we might have had another history if the Moors didn't go into Spain and go into Europe and educate them. Well, let's look at it this way. If we knew we were going into a state of dormancy, going to sleep, civilization was going to go out of our hands. Based on just age, based on, like Dr. Ben said, time just ran out. Seasons. Seasons. If we knew this, wouldn't you rather, and you knew a, a younger, savage people going to take over, wouldn't you try to want to educate them? So whenever you start to wake up out of your dormancy, you would have some sense of education and some sense of civilization. It's not the perfect. It's only a shadow of what we did. But can you imagine what would happen if you didn't educate him at all? And you came out of your dormancy and he's taking over the world. You see what I'm saying? In barbarism. So we knew if we didn't educate them, mm -hmm. you see, then when we did start to wake up, we wouldn't even have a pseudo education. We wouldn't have anything. If we just get back a part of what we gave them, there's things in us that we can preserve. You see what I'm saying? And be at a better position. Yep. We can look at the white man and say he, he, he came from the caves and preserved some stuff from us and started ruling. We got to have something so we so we were advanced enough to see the future and know that we, we had to do certain things. Because if we didn't give these children this, when we did wake up from out of our dharma, we wouldn't have nothing. Look how bad it is when we woke up. Yeah. Can you imagine if he didn't get shit? So... Our pyramids, from the pyramids, are from the pharaohs to negroes. You understand? Yeah. In so many words, it's not necessarily a tragedy, as it is a process. Now, going back to the timeline, if you rule for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, for thousands of years, transpired in the last 2,000 years as a recess because it migrated in. Pictures of Roman families that's black. To this day, if you go to Rome, they got nappy hair. You see what I'm saying? Wow. You, you see? How then was the culture of the Romans so different from that of their predecessors if they were still Black people, Egyptian people. Okay, it's, it's culture and okay, it, it, you know the culture. Now different. remember, now some of this culture started. It wasn't the central people of the land that was running it. It was these usurpers, just like you would have in South Africa, that had come in. You see what I'm saying? That had come in and started imposing things. Now let me give you an example. They talk about Roman genius. And they did this, the, the, the bathhouses and the aqueducts and all of this kind of thing. They said they basically, the Romans benefited from when they would go into places in Africa and around the ancient world and take slaves. And those slaves would take their technology and bring them back and they would use that technology to build Rome. So even, even from the buildings and from anything they did, it wasn't the actual Roman people that did this. This was the people that they colonized. You see, they are extrapolated. And these geniuses around the ancient world would come in and build the Roman engineering. See, the Romans didn't do nothing. But this, it was just a small body of people that didn't know how to do but one thing. Kill people and have people being killed for recreation in the Colosseum. Acquiesce certain material that they had gotten from the ancient people. So, a classic story was that they were dominating the Hebrew people. And at that time, Hebrew people were black people. Mm -hmm. the, the white Jew didn't come into the picture until Spain. He was converted into Judaism. So the ones that were nothing but pre were, were nothing but 
Upper Egypt, um, uh, no, Lower Egypt, Lower Egypt, Lower Egypt, which is Upper Egypt, and Upper Egypt is Lower Egypt. You see what I'm saying? So, so they call the, the bottom part of Egypt going into Ethiopia that was called Upper Egypt. The top part of Egypt they call Lower Egypt. Lower Egyptians later on became your Hebrews. So we still talk about a branch of Egyptian family. Because even in the, even in, in Hebrew mythology or Hebrew rule, they say that Misraim is Egypt, and that's one of the the tribes of Egypt, tribes of Israel. Did you get the word Is Is Ra El Isis Ra and El or Al? Is one of the names for for Horus is Al and stuff like that. But they but there's higher learn, degrees of learning that now become the company of the Lodge. Now let me explain how this Lodge thing came about. The Moors came in, they created the 16 universities. That's what we can count. We don't know. Okay, let's say if you went to the university and then you, you got your regular learning, but then you would initiate into a fraternity. Well, the same thing happened in the Moors science was this. You would come in and they would give you the general learning and then you would initiate into a higher degree of learning, which now would be the fraternities, which is a ceremonial thing, but at that particular time it was the, the Masonic orders. So your Masonic order would be equivalent to a, a, a fraternity in modern day. So when you went to these universities and stuff and you got to a certain level and you learned the general several liberal arts and stuff and the general several um, stuff that you learned, which now is all the, the, the universities um, um, teach. After that, you would go into a Masonic order that was a part of the universities or a secret society that is a part of the universities, you see what I'm saying, to learn higher degrees of knowledge. We see remnants of that now where you got the skull and bones at Yale. So the skull and bones at Yale, although you got the people from Yale, but you got a secret society. That, that all came from the Moors. So who, what would be the secret societies inside of the universities of the Moors? It would be the York Wright, Scottish Wright, all these different ones. And then later on, groups like the Rosicrucians that would come up. And what they did is that they took this, all of this Moorish doctrines. And so a lot of the higher degree stuff became a ward of the Masonic orders. You see what I'm saying? But all this stuff is nothing but stuff that they learn from the Moors. You see, from they learn from the Moors. And everything is a, is a series of, of acquiescing somebody else's paradigms. So the Moors saw a vision. The Moors saw a vision of a country in a place by the setting sun that was not even a civilization yet. It hadn't even come into fruition. And the Moors set out to bring that city on a shining hill that Ronald Reagan talks about. In the West, you see what I'm saying? That's selfish. And it's selfish because you don't know how to feel about somebody, even the fact that they never made you feel a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's you know, it's the same, you know, so it's 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 this thing, it's this fear that they feel that the society that they're gonna be in has to be based on keeping the architects down. Number one, you gotta keep them down because you stole every damn thing from them. Just for that to come out, you see what I'm saying, would make you feel inferior. Now, that one um, was thinking like them. We wouldn't think that you're inferior if you inherited a civilization that we put together, but you think that you're inferior, you see what I'm saying, if you told the people, no, they're, they're the architects of this thing. So it's, a, it's some psychological sick and twisted stuff. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, ne ne nevertheless, you know, um, 
what we what we have a problem with is understanding people's thoughts, people's mentalities, people's temperament. You see what I'm saying? And we as black people get caught up in that because we think that they think like us. You know, all, all this stuff had to be in the particular aspect because let me give you, you said, well, why does this have to be this way? Well, look, let's just take the Moors. Because some people say, well, you know, we might have had another history if the Moors didn't go into Spain and go into Europe and educate them. Well, let's look at it this way. And we knew we were going into a state of dormancy, going to sleep. Civilization was going to go out of our hands. Based on just age, based on, like Dr. Ben said, time just ran out. Seasons. Seasons. If we knew this, wouldn't you rather, and you knew a, a younger, savage people going to take over, wouldn't you try to want to educate them? So whenever you start to wake up out of your dormancy, you would have some sense of education and some sense of civilization. It's not the perfect it's only a shadow of what we did. But can you imagine what would happen if you didn't educate him at all? And you came out of your dorm and said, he's taking over the world. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In barbarism. So we knew if we didn't educate them. Mm -hmm. You see. Then when we did start to wake up, we was paradigms. So the Moors saw a vision, the Moors saw a vision of a country and a place by the setting sun that was not even a civilization yet. It hadn't even come into fruition. And the Moors set out to bring that city on a shining hill that Ronald Reagan talks about. In the West, they start America. That's why you, you, you so many presidents before you, George Washington were all black. Those were Moors. So this whole system over here was set up, you see what I'm saying? By the Moors. And for some reason, because of the Moors conquering Europe and the Moors being the origin of Americas, for some reason the people who benefited from that deemed the Moor, which means black faced one, or the black or more, or it also means, because uh, anytime you hear the word Sufi, that's another word for the Moors. The word Sufi means woolly-haired one. Mm -hmm. So instead of and so it's, it's so so instead of saying so so they'll, they'll separate Sufi from the Moor. The Moor was a woolly-haired one. You see, and some reason I don't know if it was after after um, Spain. Uh, C. Primanel calls it Manischeism, racism with Queen Isabella and those particular ones. They deem the Moor the enemy. Who? The European secret societies that were started by the Moors. Okay. You see, it was started by the Moors. For some reason, it's almost as if to say um, because you are our teacher, you have to be our enemy. Is this why I'm doing initiation? They come in, Talk about like Dr. Ben said, when, 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 when the white masons or the white secret societies, what they do is when they're, when they're, whenever their initiates or their neophytes cross over into the, they see, so it's, it's, it's a lot of things. Which, which later on, so in so many words, Rome had to be so that we could have the experience of what atrocities would come, 
you see what I'm saying, with later European cultures. Which leads us to the Egyptian priests again. No one again, because they did it twice. They, they say, we got to further this information to Greece and Rome. And then, during the time of, of um, Muhammad's invasion into Egypt, the Egyptian priest once again said, we have to take this information to Europe. Now why? They said after they closed the last temple, they closed the last temple of Isis at Philae. For some reason, I don't know if it was spiritual, they said Europe went into a dark age. I think they went into a dark age because after Rome fell, you see what I'm saying? They how never did, had how this. Did Rome fall? Huh? How did Rome fall? Well, it deteriorated based on like anything else, from corruption. And Rome fell after its reputation was found out. Rome was weak for a couple of years, but they had killed so many people until they had a representation. You don't mess with Rome. But remember they said that the, 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 the German vandals, they, they were illiterate, so they didn't get the memo that these people wasn't nothing to fuck with. And they went up in there and kicked Rome ass. <laughs> you see, so it deteriorated over the years based on, based on, um, based on corruption. And also they, they uh, with Constantine, although he, you know, they say he, didn't he kill his mother and his daughter or something like that? He turned it into a Christian country and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Um, it was weakened for the simple fact that it meant that they couldn't, if they're going to do the army thing, they're going to have to do it in another fashion. They're going to have to have the Holy Roman Empire. But it's a Holy Roman Empire. So they got to hide behind the Pope when they do these conquests. But it's not going to be the same might of the Caesars. You see what I'm saying? They're just going to have to just rule in another way. In actuality, they, they never did fall. They just acquiesced Europe with the religion, so it became a religious domination. You see what I'm saying? Um, a religious domination and stuff. The military failed, but they had a new way to rule. You see, the new, new, new way to rule. It's the same thing when we talk about the queen of a, a prince. was a necessity. Well, this is what I mean by that. First of all, when I ask the question in the spirit realm, when I ask the question, well, why did you let the Greeks into the Egyptian educational system? And the first thing I ask is, why did you let white people into the Egyptian um, educational system? They say, no, we, the spirit realm say, no, we never let white people into the educational system. I said, but you let the Greeks in. They said, yes. Then what are they trying to say? They're trying to say that the Greek civilization was a black civilization. Now we do know now that they just convened um, in, the, in the late 1990s and wrote a book called East Face of Helicon. He's an Oxford, Oxford of Cambridge. And they're saying that the Greek mythology, now this is different, now Greek, Greek philosophy came from the Egyptians or the Camites. Greek mythology came from the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians is where you got Carthage and later on Libya, that part of Africa. Those were pre-dynastic Egyptians. Black. Black. And if the if if if, if the Greek mythology and the first book of, 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 of fiction is Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey. Then you have to ask, and they said, and we can trace the Hesed's theogony, which gives you your Greek mythology, and the people at Oxford University in 1999 or 1998 concluded that this stuff, origins, comes from the Phoenician, which they even traced Athena. Now, Athens is supposed to be the great citadel of Greece, one of the central, pla uh, central places that is named after Athena, Athens. Well, Athena is a god that they trace from Libya, 
which would be modern day Libya, earlier Carthage, and even earlier Phoenicia. Phoenicia, which means that it goes right in hand. If they said that the Greek mythology came from Phoenicia, and they traced the the uh, Athena to Libya, and Athena is an Egyptian god called Nis in, in Egypt, and she's the form of Maya, and they're now calling her or uh, celebrating her as an African goddess, and she's supposed to be the central goddess of Greece. It meant that the civilization of Greece had to be a Phoenician civilization. Up until the point that they entered Egypt, by the time that the uh, that the, uh, the Ptolemy period civilization climbs, rises, and then it declines. You see, but if you look at it, and, and most people accept that, but most people accept the decline of a civilization based on modern time, mm -hmm. two, two, 200 years, 300 years. You're dealing with um, African history from Pharaoh to Negro. Africans went from a pharaonic mastership to projects. We probably in hell already. Our dumb ass is not knowing. Everybody kissing ass and go to heaven ain't going. Put my soul on it. I'm fighting devil niggas daily. Plus the media be crucifying brother Savannah. Tell me I ain't God, son. Nigga, mama a virgin. We got a dick that had to lead the birds. Back in the ghetto doing wild shit. Looking at the sun, don't pay. Criminal mind all the time. Wait for judgment day. They say Moses split the Red Sea. I split the blunt and roll the fat when I'm dead. Babylon, beware. Calling for the Pharaoh's kids. Retaliation making legends off the shit we did. Still bullshitting niggas in Jerusalem. Waiting for signs. God coming, she just taking her time. Uh -huh. Living by the now while the water flows. I'm contemplating plots. Wonder where the thought of gold. Brothers getting shot. Coming back, resurrected. Is this that raw shit, nigga? Check it. Can I remember what my papa told me? Remember what my papa told me? The preacher want me very wise. I know he a liar. Have you ever seen a crackhead? That's eternal fire. Why you got these kids' minds thinking that they evil? Why the preacher be a freak? You say honor God's people. Should we cry when the whole die? My request, we should cry if they cry when we bury my comments. Mama, tell me, am I wrong? Is God just another cop waiting to be my ass if I don't go pop? Memories of a past time, giving up cash to the leaders, knowing damn well they ain't gonna feed us. In my brain, how can you explain Thomas BC? It's far enough to live now in these times of grief. They say Jesus is a common man. We should understand times in this crime land. My third nation, do what you gotta do, but know you gotta change. Try to find a way to make it out the game. I leave this and hope God can see my heart is pure. It's heaven just another door. In April, I was fortunate to make the Hajj to Mecca and went back again in September to try and carry out my religious uh, functions and, and, and uh, requirements. But at the same time that I believe in that religion, I have to point out I'm also an American Negro. And I live in a society who, whose, whose uh, social system is based upon the castration of the black man, whose political system... Um, Spain, uh, C. Primadel calls it manischeism racism, with Queen Isabella and those particular ones. They deem the more the enemy. Who? The European secret societies that were started by the Moors. Okay. You see, it was started by the Moors. For some reason, it's almost as if to say, um, because you are our teacher, you have to be our enemy. Is this why I do an initiation? They come in, Talk about like Dr. Ben said, when, 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 when the white masons or the white secret societies, what they do is when they, when they, whenever their initiates or their neophytes cross over into the, into the initiated, the first thing they do is bring a black man in from wherever, blindfolded, and say, this is your father. Always hold 
him down. Hmm. Why? They know that civilization originated with us. They know that they are the latter part of that. For some reason, they feel that the only way they can rule is to keep the initiators of civilization down. It's some sick, demented way of thinking. It's a fear, xenophobia. This particular fear, we got to got a coin a new term for it. It's not the fear of a xenophobia is the fear of a person that's unlike you, different cultures or what have you. We got to coin a new phrase that has to be into the lexicon, and that is a word that will say you fear a person that you deem is greater than you. And that's the difference here. They fear us and they, they say that we are the enemies not because we are different. We are the enemies because we are the initiators of civilization and we gave them all that they have. You see, if you build a TV, you build an airplane, you build anything, the blueprints on what you might later they come to build these things, you got the technology from a earlier people. Now you might expound upon it to the point where you uh, it's useful to the time you're living in, but nevertheless you were not the authors of the blueprint. You were not the master builder, which was the pay of, you know, some of these festivals. Right. So now, so as a result, Rome had to make a central religion of the state, but they had to make a religion that could accommodate that can accommodate the, the, the masses of Rome. Just like now, it's easier to be a Christian than a Muslim, or either a, he or either a Hebrew, or, 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 or the Jewish thing later on. Why? Because Christianity, you get to do certain things. Mostly, basically, you can do the hell you want as long as you ask the Lord to forgive, forgive you. And that accommodates, that's why we ask the question, well, if, 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 if you don't even supposed to eat pork, why do Christians eat pork? Because they said that what the Romans, it goes all the way back to Rome, what the Romans did for the Roman citizens, and they said it was also the Paul. Pauline doctrine. Paul was a Roman citizen. Paul was also an agent for Rome. Right. So he fashioned the Christianity without the strict doctrines so that the Roman people could acquiesce to what I'm saying. And that's what central Christianity is about is it's, a, it's, it's something that is designed for Roman consumption and later on European consumption. Correct. You see what I'm saying? European consumption. Because it because the African way of it, you start getting into ways of life. Certain things you don't create. And we see this when we see the Christianity. We even see this when we see uh, Judaism, which is ancient, it's spin off of ancient Hebrew. It's just that we don't know what them Jews do, but they got all these strict rules and stuff. Well, stuff gotta be kosher. You see what I'm saying? We don't eat no shellfish. You see, so different things like that. But the Romans, they made it so, hey, it could be a party. <laughs> we can go to the party with this. You see, now going back to the... Back to the yeah. When they were killing Christians, right? these were black people they were killing. They were black people they were yeah. killing, and they was, these were the people that they were usurping their religion from. See, they was killing the ones They said, no, we got... It's just like this. to say, look... Um, we trying to take this religion, but if we got some people that's got practices that's different than the Romans, we got to take them out if we going to make this religion central and conduce it to us. But the ones that they were killing was the original Christians. They're saying that the original Christianity don't even resemble the Christianity that we have now, because the original Christianity was a spinoff from the Hebrew aspect, which had a lot of codes and laws. You see what I'm saying? So when they, so those sects that they were killing, it wasn't it, 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 it wasn't they were kill, it, they were killing Romans or they were killing um, people that had the same faith. No, they were trying to cover up the fact. You see the new new major rule. It's the same thing when we talk about the Queen of the uh, Prince Charles after he got his ass whipped over here. And they couldn't deal with guerrilla warfare. 
or where these rednecks was over here fighting. They said, no, nah, you go over there, they're going to beat you a hundred years. They said, it's regroup, and we will take over financially. And then we'll put, because of the finances, we'll put the heads of the government will be connected to the queen. And we'll rule that way, rule through secrecy. So, same thing happened with the Egyptian priests after they took, after um, Egypt fell. They said, well, look, it, when, it, you know, uh, uh, when Mah um, and Muhammad was still living when the Arabs invaded, um, invaded um, uh, uh, Egypt. If there was a Muhammad, it could have just been a central priest to it. Because we know Bilal, come to find out he was the one who wrote the Quran because if there was a historical Muhammad, he couldn't read or write till the day he died. You see? Mm -hmm. He couldn't read or write till the day he died. And we knew it was some type of Egyptian, Ethiopian priesthood just by a central surah of the star where they mention Sirius in the Quran. You see? The moon, Tahuti, the cow, Hathor, you see, these different these different things that they did means that this used to be this was a part of a mystery system. You see, uh, and, and in this particular case, it probably was an Ethiopian Kushite mystery system because we know Arabia was a part of Kush. We know it had to be a Kushite mystery system based on the first five books of Moses. You see, it, it's not a Central Egyptian thing. It's a it's a it's it's, it's just a of the third coming of Judeo-Christian. You see. But in that particular case, by that time of them, Ethiopia had usurped the whole Hebrew thing. And parts of Coptic Christianity. So we know who, who put this thing together. You see what I'm saying? It, uh, it, it wasn't translated from Gabriel, but then again, Gabriel could have been a priesthood. But in so many words, after they came and 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 and, and, and dominated and, and, and took over Egypt, the Egyptian priest said, look, Islam is a new conquest tool. You see, to, to essentially bring Islam into play, they, they had to fight at Mecca and Medina. It was a kick-ass machine. So they said, this is the same kick-ass machine that conquered did for the Roman citizens. And they said it was also the Paul, Pauline doctrine. Paul was a Roman citizen. Paul was also an agent for Rome. Right. So he fashioned the Christianity without the strict doctrines so that the Roman people could acquiesce to what I'm saying. And that's what central Christianity is about, is... It's, a, it's, it's something that is designed for Roman consumption and later on European consumption. Correct. You see what I'm saying? European consumption. Because it, because the African way of it, you start getting into ways of life. Certain things you don't create. And we see this when we see the Christianity. We even see this when we see uh, Judaism, which is ancient. It's spin off of ancient Hebrew. It's just that we don't know what them Jews do, but they got all these strict rules and stuff. Stuff gotta be kosher. You see what I'm saying? We don't eat no shellfish. You see, so different things like that. But the Romans, they made it so, hey, it could be a party. <laughs> we can go to the party with this. You see, now going back to the. Back to the yeah. When they were killing Christians, right? these were black people they were killing. They were black people they were yeah. killing, and they was, they, these were the people that they were usurping their religion from. See, they was killing the ones they said, no, we got, it's just like this. They say, look. Um, we're trying to take this religion. But if we got some people that's got practices that's different than the Romans, we got to take them out if we're going to make this religion central and conduce it to us. But the ones that they were killing was the original Christians. They're saying that the original Christianity don't even resemble the Christianity that we have now. Because the original Christianity was a spinoff from the Hebrew aspect, which had a lot of codes and laws. You see what I'm saying? So when they, so those sets that they were killing, it wasn't it, 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 it wasn't they were killing they were killing Romans or they were killing 
um, people that had the same faith. No, they was trying to cover up the fact that there was groups of people that had another indigenous way of worshiping. And they had to get rid of this because Paul, the, the Pauline doctrines had much more um, uh, uh, what you call a, a pseudo type of practices that the Roman people could get with. You got to realize, we're talking about people that used to go to Colosseum just to see black people getting killed. We're talking about people like Caligula with all kind of perverted sex acts and stuff like that. Colleges um, wrote on these texts. There's a text in France called Abduction Extraordinaire. Never was translated into English, but it says that these, it talks about these people. He said these people that live in, in Europe, folks just ask these questions. But what are these black people doing here? They had to make an uh, African migration to cover up the fact that that original land was black people and black people still live on that land. Where they live in Israel, you see what I'm saying? Where they even live as far as Vietnam. So the point I'm trying to make here is, we even have to question that. Take for instance. Well, let me give you one other thing that, that, I, that I'm going to do to, to clear this up about the Egyptians and their relationship with the Greeks. Another faction of African people. There's some books called the Alexandria Product Projects that came out in the early 90s. And so they, what they wanted to do is, is they said, well, we want to we try to get as much stuff that we know that we benefited from the Library of Alexandria. Which the Library of Alexandria was nothing but a consortium of works that came from the temples to be on one, be on one central um, library during the time of um, during the time of, 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 of Cleopatra and the time of the whole Greek thing. They, they, they convened and had these conferences and they had these, these books that came out, these Alexandria pro product books that came out and they, they mentioned something in there. Now in this relationship, the reason why se several doctrines had to be handed over to the Greeks is because they understood one thing. They understood that Hieroglyphics of Metanetta was going to be a dead language for close to 2,000 years, for over 2,000 years. Understanding these priests, understanding this stuff was going to be a dead language, they had to give certain things to the cultures that would be later cultures that it would, these later cultures would give the information that would fall in the hands of younger cultures even younger cultures than the later cultures. So the Egyptian priests understood we have to further this particular information which which eventually went to the Moors. So let me let me let me go back to this so you can understand this. In this Alexandrian conference that they had, they came up with the truth in the early 1990s. They said that a, a 100 year period of Greek rule, one to 200 year period, mostly about 100 years, they did one thing. They literally translated Metanetta, a hieroglyphics, at the Temple of Dendera, the Temple of Isis, the Temple of Esna, a Temple of Komongo, uh, and, and some Ptolemy um, temples, and the Library of Alexandria. The Egyptian priests, now how can a Greek person, how can a person from another culture, know what the Canaanites are thinking if they're, they're Sufi. That's another word for the Moors. The word Sufi means woolly-haired one. So instead of, so, it's, it's so, so instead of saying, so, so they'll, they'll separate Sufi from the Moor. The Moor was a woolly-haired one. You see. And some reason I don't know if it was after after um, Spain, uh, C. Primadel calls it Manichaeism, racism, with Queen Isabella and those particular ones. They deemed the Moor the enemy. Who? The European secret societies that were started by the Moors. Okay. You see, it was started by the Moors. For some reason, it's almost as if to say, um, because you are a teacher, you have to be our enemy. 
Is this why I do an initiation? They come in, talk about like Dr. Ben said, when, 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 when the white masons or the white secret societies, what they do is when they're, when they're, whenever they're initiates or they're neophytes cross over into the, into the initiated, the first thing they do is bring a black man in from wherever, blindfolded, and say, this is your father. Always hold him down. Hmm. Why? They know that civilization originated with us. They know that they are the latter part of that. For some reason, they feel that the only way they can rule is to keep the initiators of civilization down. It's some sick, demented way of thinking. It's a fear, xenophobia. This particular fear, we got, we got to coin a new term for it. It's not the fear of a... Xenophobia is the fear of a person that's unlike you. Different cultures or what have you. We got to coin a new phrase that has to be into the lexicon. And that is a word that will say, you fear a person that you deem is greater than you. And that's the difference here. They fear us and they, they say that we are the enemies not because we are different. We are the enemies because we are the initiators of civilization. In Cambridge, Oxford, in those early universities around Europe opened from the stuff that they preserved from the Moors. Then, after 1492, and a little bit, a couple of years later, they start having the Renaissance period in Italy. Now remember that this is very key, because you'll hear these white people talk about the Renaissance periods. And they'll talk about things and all this learning and all this stuff.
because of the Moors conquering Europe and the Moors being the origin of Americas, for some reason the people who benefited from that deemed the Moor, which means black faced one, or the black or more, or it also means because because see, see, uh, anytime you hear the word Sufi, that's another word for the Moors. The word Sufi means woolly haired one. So instead of and so it's, it's so so instead of saying so so they'll they'll separate Sufi from the Moor. The Moor was a woolly haired one. You see, and some reason I don't know if it was after after um, Spain. Uh, C. Primanel calls it manischeism racism with Queen Isabella and those particular ones. They deem the Moor. The enemy. Who? The European secret societies that were started by the Moors. Okay. You see, it was started by the Moors. For some reason, it's almost as if to say, um, because you are a teacher, you have to be our enemy. Is this why I do an initiation? They come in. Talk about like Dr. Ben said, when, 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 when the white masons or the white secret societies, what they do is when they, when they, whenever their initiates or their neophytes cross over into the, into the initiated, the first thing they do is bring a black man in from wherever, blindfolded, and say, this is your father. Always hold him down. Hmm. Why? They know that civilization originated with us. They know that they are the latter part of that. For some reason, they feel that the only way they can rule is to keep the initiators of civilization down. Is some sick, demented way of thinking. It's a fear, xenophobia. This particular fear, we got to got a corner new term for it. It's not the fear of a. We have to take this information to Europe. Now, why? They said after they closed the last temple, they closed the last temple of ISIS at Philae. For some reason, I don't know if it was spiritual, they say Europe went into a dark age. I think they went into a dark age because after Rome fell, you see what I'm saying? They how never did, had how this. Did Rome fall? Huh? How did Rome fall? Well, it deteriorated based on like anything else, from corruption. And Rome fell after its reputation was found out. Rome was weak for a couple of years, but they had killed so many people. Until they had a representation, you don't mess with Rome. But remember, they said that the, 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 the German vandals, they, they were illiterate, so they didn't get the memo that these people wasn't nothing to fuck with. And they went up in there and kicked Rome ass. <laughs> you see, so it deteriorated over the years based on, based on, um, based on corruption. And also, they, they uh, with Constantine, although he, you know, they say he, didn't he kill his mother and his daughter or something like that? He turned it into a Christian country and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Um, it was weakened for the simple fact that it meant that they couldn't, if they're going to do the army thing, they're going to have to do it in another fashion. They're going to have to have the Holy Roman Empire. But it's a holy Roman Empire. So they got to hide behind the Pope when they do these conquests. But it's not going to be the same might of the Caesars. You see what I'm saying? They're just going to have to just rule in another way. In actuality, they, they never did fall. They just acquiesced Europe with the religion. So it became a religious domination. You 
You see what I'm saying? Um, a religious domination and stuff. The military failed, but they had a new way to rule. You see, the new, new, new way to rule. It's the same thing when we talk about the Queen of the, uh, Prince Charles after he got his ass whipped over here and they couldn't deal with guerrilla warfare. Or the way these rednecks was over here fighting. They said, no, nah, you go over there, they're going to beat you a hundred years. They said, just regroup and we will take over financially. And then we'll put, because of the finances, we'll put the heads of the government will be connected to the Queen. And we'll rule that way, rule through secrecy. So, same thing happened with the Egyptian priests after they took, after um, Egypt fell. They said, well, look, when, you know, uh, uh, when my 